And we begin this evening with a warning to the United States from the government of Saudi Arabia. Release the 28 pages and you will face an economic collapse. That's right, the Saudis are threatening the United States with financial terrorism. And they have warned the Obama White House that they are ready to sell off $750 billion worth of U.S. Treasury bonds, which could seriously cripple or even destroy the U.S. economy. But why on earth would Saudi Arabia threaten the United States? I mean, they're supposed to be our ally, right? Well, it's because Saudi officials and members of the Saudi royal family are panicking right now over a federal lawsuit which may finally reveal the contents of the still classified 28 pages of the Joint Inquiry Intelligence Report on 9-11, which will prove once and for all that the government of Saudi Arabia helped finance and assist the terrorist hijackers responsible for the attacks on 9-11. And this is where I say it looks like the conspiracy theorists were right all along. Don't say we didn't tell you so. And who was it that made the decision to classify the 28 pages to begin with? Well, you guessed it, George W. Bush. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. And don't forget, Bush and Cheney, they never even wanted a investigation into 9-11 to begin with. It was only until after the victims' families and the 9-11 survivors, it was, it was after they demanded an investigation that the 9-11 Commission was created. And get this. Bush and Cheney refused to testify under oath. Instead, they agreed to meet with the 9-11 Commission only behind closed doors and under the following conditions. They would meet together. The session would not be recorded, nor would it be transcribed or made public. Very suspicious, don't you think? And even more bizarre, I think, was the... Just Bush's mannerisms and his body language, this was during the press conference right after he and Dick Cheney met with the 9-11 Commission. Mr. President, as you know, a lot of critics suggested that you wanted to appear jointly with the vice president so that you two could keep your story straight or something. Yeah. Could you tell us what you think of the value of appearing together and how you would answer those critics? Yeah, first of all, look, I mean, if we had something to hide, we wouldn't have met with him in the first place. We answered all their questions, and uh, as I say, I think I, I came away good about the session uh, because I wanted them to know, you know, how I set strategy, how we run the White House, how we deal with threats. Uh, the vice president answered a lot of their questions, answered all their questions, and I think it was important for them to see our body language as well, how we work together. Uh, uh, but it was, uh, you know, the commissioners will speak for themselves over time. They'll, they will let you know whether they thought it was a fruitful series of discussions. I, th I think they did. I think they, I think they, I think they found it to be useful. Yeah, Adam. Mr. President, did, did, the, yes. did the, don't you think that the families deserve to have a transcript or to be able to see what <laughs> Adam, you said? Adam, you asked me that question yesterday. An I got the today. same answer, yeah. You see, right there, you could tell he's nervous, and it looks like he's hiding something. And I think you can even get more of a sense of his awkwardness if you watch the press conference in its entirety. It's only five minutes long. I mean, Bush was in and out of there in a big hurry. He looks very uncomfortable. You could tell he doesn't want to be there. I mean, he is squirming the entire time. And that's because they were hiding something. And guess what? They still are. So what are they so afraid of? I mean, why does Bush and the Saudi royal family, why do they want to keep the 28 pages secret? And why is President Barack Obama acting like such a coward when it comes to getting threats from Saudi Arabia? What on earth is in those 28 pages? Here's what we know so far. According to members of Congress from both parties who have read it, as well as the heads of the 9-11 Commission, they say the 28 pages will completely change everything you think you know about the 9-11 attacks. These documents will change history. 
this sort of shocking when you read it. As I read it, and we all had our own experience, I had to stop every couple pages and just sort of absorb and try to rearrange my understanding of history for the past uh, 13 years and the years leading up to that. It, it challenges you to rethink everything. And so uh, I think the whole country needs to go through that. I want those documents declassified. I'm embarrassed to be associated with a work product that is secret. Former Senator Bob Graham said that the 28 pages primarily relate to who financed 9-11. Follow the money, right? And they point a very strong finger at Saudi Arabia as being the principal financier. And I'll never forget watching Senator Max Cleland on CNN with Wolf Blitzer when he announced that he was going to resign from the 9-11 Commission because the entire investigation was a scam. Are legitimate members of the commission. We have the top security clearances. We're an independent commission for an independent operational look at why 9-11 happened, what happened there, when the pre what the president and the government knew, and when they knew it. What's their, what's their argument, the, the White House? Why won't they let you see this? What do they say? They, they don't want any more eyeballs to see their documents than they can possibly get away with. It's a scam. It's absolutely disgusting. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting, because not only does the 28 pages reveal Saudi Arabian involvement in the September 11th attacks, but it also specifies sources. We're talking names, all right? We're talking specific individuals that are implicated here, and one of the names on the list is extremely significant. We're talking bombshell. In fact, drum roll, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Prince Bandar bin Sultan, who was the Saudi Arabia's ambassador to the United States at the time of the terrorist attacks on 9-11. And he also just happens to be a lifelong intimate and personal friend of the Bush family. In fact, he is so close with the Bushes that his nickname around the White House is Bandar Bush. Look it up. It's an open secret. Not only is Prince Bandar a longtime business partner of the Bushes, but they also have a very close friendship together. And this, of course, includes Bush Sr., who would bring Prince Bandar along on hunting trips. They would go fishing together, hang out with the family, go on vacations. A very cozy relationship. And this is troubling because that means two sitting U.S. presidents had close personal and financial ties with a foreign power. Get it? I mean, this was an unholy alliance. Well, still is. And in one of the redacted sections of the 28 pages, there is evidence of a transfer of $130,000 from Prince Bandar's wife that went directly into the checking account of the 9-11 hijackers. Wow. And there was also other members of the Saudi royal family, all of these guys who have close ties with the Bush cartel, by the way. And according to the 28 pages, they provided financial assistance to several of the 9-11 hijackers, and then they fled the country days before the attacks. Now, I want you to picture this because what I'm about to tell you actually happened. It is documented, and it is in the White House logs. This occurred just a couple days at, after September 11th, September 13th, to be exact. But President George W. Bush and Prince Bandar, they were actually hanging out together during a private meeting, smoking Cohiba cigars on the Truman balcony at the White House. Well, I tell you what, I sure would have liked to have been a fly on the wall during that conversation but I have a pretty good idea what they were talking about. I imagine they were discussing the evacuation plan and how they worked together to evacuate and to smuggle out of the country members of the Saudi royal family, Saudi officials, and even members of the bin Laden family out of the country immediately after the 9-11 attacks. And keep in mind, this was during the time when all air travel in the continental United States was grounded. Nobody was allowed to fly. 
Yet the order was given straight from the White House to evacuate Saudi Arabians and even members of the bin Laden family, one of them who was actually on the terror watch list at the time. Incredible. And they were flown out of the United States, dozens of them from multiple cities all across the country, back to Saudi Arabia. And instead of interrogating these guys and asking them questions, well, the FBI provided security, and they smuggled these suspects out of the country. You know, and the bin Laden family was whisked out of the United States by President Bush himself right after the 9-11 attack, and they went back to Saudi Arabia, correct? That's right. You see there, even Bill O'Reilly is finally talking about it now. Better late than never, I guess. And, you know, what really gets me, it makes me angry. It bothered me back then, and it really bothers me now in hindsight, and that is the rhetoric, the warmongering, the hypocrite George W. Bush at the time, who was well aware of the fact that the 9-11 terrorist attacks were not only largely funded by the government of Saudi Arabia, but also in part by his very close and personal friend, Bandar Bush. I mean, what the f Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. And that, my friends, was the worst president in U.S. history. Well, until now. Barack Hussein Obama has promised on at least two separate occasions that he would release the 28 pages. Yeah, well, we're still waiting. You know, he actually met with the 9-11 victims, family members, and the survivors, met them face-to-face, -face, looked them in the eyes, and promised them that he would release the 28 pages. Now we're finding out that he's never even bothered to read the documents. The 28 pages of the 9-11 report. Have you read it? You know, I have a sense of what's in there. Jim Clapper, uh, our director of uh, national intelligence, uh, has been going through to make sure that uh, whatever it is that is released is not going to compromise some uh, major uh, national security interest of the United States. And what was Obama's reaction to the threats made by Saudi Arabia to destroy our economy? Well, he boarded Air Force One on a direct flight to Riyadh to go bow down to the Saudi king. King Salman, who, by the way, is also mentioned by name reportedly in the 28 pages as yet another financier of the attacks on our country. Yeah, that looks like an accurate depiction right there. Obama says he will veto the bill in Congress that would release the 28 pages to the public and allow the 9-11 victims' families and survivors of the attack to sue the Saudi government. Not going to happen. We don't know what's in those pages, except that we do know it pertains to the Saudi government and two American presidents don't want it released. Add to this the following. Last year, President Obama signed an agreement with Saudi Arabia to provide for the sale of 60 billion, with a B, dollars worth of weaponry over the next 10 years from American arms merchants to the Saudi government. Donald Trump, on the other hand, says if he becomes president, he will indeed release the 28 pages. And that's why we need an anti-establishment president. And for those of you out there who say that it's not good enough, there's more to 9-11 than just the 28 pages. Well, I'd have to agree with you. You're absolutely right. But get this. Once these documents are released to the public, that's when the entire house of cards begins to fall. Governor Bush. How we doing? Good to All right, good. How you doing? I was wondering, would you be in favor of seeing the 28 pages that have been redacted from the 9-11 Commission report? Would yeah, you sure. be one to see those released? Yeah, I'd like to see them. You got them? When I dream of my wedding day, I will carry his picture and wish he were there with me. Yeah, I'd like to see him. You got him? My son's dead, and I don't know all the facts. Yeah, I'd like to see him. You got him? Keeping it a secret about those who facilitated it must end now. Uh, well, Andrew we, may have. Hopefully, we can get him. Can Thank you. Hello. 
lot of people ask me what is the most important area of InfoWars that runs the whole operation that is having such a big effect against the globalists. And I've said it over and over again, it is you, the listeners and the viewers, that send us the intel, the news tips, that support the broadcast, that spread the word. You are 90% of the operation or more. You don't stand beside us, you stand at the heart of InfoWars. When I talk about the people at InfoWars, from customer service, the shipping department, being just as important as our anchors, our researchers, our investigative journalists and myself, it's absolutely true. Without this team that we've built over the last 20 plus years, we wouldn't be able to do any of what we've been doing. And that's what's so exciting because we finally built up to a point where we now have the launch pad. Introducing AutoShip for InfoWarsLife.com, a new way to save time and money when you stock up on InfoWarsStore.com products. Again, ladies and gentlemen, when products are sold out, you're unable to get them, sometimes for months, but we hold back the products for people that have already signed up for AutoShip. When you choose AutoShip before checkout on your order at InfoWarsStore.com, we'll give you 10% off and give you guaranteed delivery of out-of-stock products that are on your AutoShip list. Plus, we're giving you free shipping on all orders above $50. Listeners have been requesting this for years because it's so easy to forget to reorder the products when you need them each month. Now it's finally here. Auto ship at InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsLife.com. It's easy. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, select your favorite product, click on the auto ship, and choose how often you want us to send you another order. As you know, I coined the term 360 win. And with the new auto ship feature at InfoWarsLife.com, it's a sure win. You add to that free shipping on orders of $50, it is a can't lose. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and save 10% off on your next InfoWars Life order by selecting Auto Ship at checkout and get free shipping on all orders above $50. That's InfoWarsStore.com or call toll free 888 253 3139.